Hi, my name is Ethan Wang. I'm a postdoc at the Max Planck Institute for Gravity and Physics. Uh, so my topic today is uh, uh, searching for primordial black holes from Amaris with a stochastic gravitational wave background. Uh, so I will start with uh, talking about primordial black holes. So we know that LIGO of Virgo has already detected dozens of uh, binary black holes events, and uh, the origin of uh, uh, this black hole is, in, is an interesting question. So one formation channel is that they are the product of a stellar evolution. Alternatively, they can also be primordial black holes. Uh, they are a kind of uh, hypothetical black hole produced by direct gravitational collapse in the very early universe by the primordial overdensity. And uh, uh, they can be candidates for cold dark matter in the sense that uh, primordial black holes uh, are consistent with uh, all the properties that dark matter requires. So since gravitational waves provide a new way to uh, probe the existence of uh, black holes, so in this project we uh, use the stochastic background to try to answer the question, uh, what is the friction of uh, primordial black holes in dark matter? So another motivation is that uh, the more popular uh, candidate for dark matter, the so-called WIMPs particles. Uh, up to now, that all the either direct or indirect uh, searches uh, has not given uh, have not given decisive uh, results for the existence. So, primordial black hole is a, so that motivates us to uh, look for other candidates like primordial black hole, and uh, this is a, a candidate within the standard model. Uh, so, in this project, we uh, consider the, the stochastic uh, gravitational wave background. It is uh, a, a kind of a superposition of uh, many, many uh, single sources, uh, many weak uh, sources, and. Um, uh, from the Amaris, the more massive black holes is the, uh, the, the supermassive black holes located at the center of uh, almost all the galaxies. And we assume that the uh, lighter black holes is the primordial black holes with subsolar mass. The, this choice is because uh, this kind of uh, GW signal is within the frequency band of LISA. Okay, so... Uh, we know that massive black holes are ubiquitous at the uh, galactic center, and uh, if, uh, uh, under the assumption that primordial black holes play the role of dark matter, and we know that uh, uh, there are dark matters in the galactic center, then the dark matter or primordial black holes can, can revolve around the, the center supermassive black hole, and they form a Amory interacting system. And uh, the stochastic gravitational wave background from such an Amory is the interest of uh, this paper. So from this slide on, I will derive a few formulas to uh, characterize the, the, this background. So usually we use the, this omega to characterize the uh, stochastic background. This small rho is the energy density, and nu is the frequency, and rho c is, the, uh, is a constant, uh, uh, which is the uh, critical energy of uh, our universe. And to calculate uh, the energy density, we start from the energy flux of the gravitational wave. And basically, it is an uh, integration consisting of two terms. Uh, one term is the gravitational wave flux from a a single source. And uh, another term is the number density of the sources. We will uh, model these uh, two terms one by one. Uh, for the GW flux, we model it by the quadruple formula. And um, uh, under the assumption that uh, this memory is in circular motion. And that is enough for calculating the stochastic background because uh, we do not care about the detailed uh, waveform of uh, a, a single source, but we, we, uh, we are more interested in the superposition of all the, all the sources. 
and the orbital distance is related to the frequency and total mass by the Kepler third law. And then the uh, gravitational wave power uh, is such a formula. And the final result for the stochastic background is uh, uh, in this uh, uh, form. So here, I also put on a detailed uh, dictionary to uh, let the readers know uh, the meaning of every parameters. But I do want to mention a particularly interesting term, uh, which is the FPBH times MPBH, which where uh, FPBH is the fraction of uh, primordial black hole in dark matter, and small m is the mass. So this is uh, in a uh, scaling relation, which means that if uh, the mass of a primordial black hole is 10 times larger, then if the fraction or the abundance is 10 times smaller, then the overall effect is not changed. And uh, uh, this uh, friction term is, uh, 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 is dealt with uh, is a free parameter. So uh, after modeling the, uh, the GW uh, flux, then uh, we move forward to model the source density. So here, since the primordial black holes fall off the distribution of dark matter, we resort to the dark matter spec distribution. Uh, basically, this uh, uh, theory says that if there is a supermassive black hole in the galactic center, then the evolution, the co-evolution of the massive black hole and uh, the, the nearby dark matter will boost the dark matter density distribution. If uh, initially the dark matter follows the, the famous NFW profile, then after this co-evolution, the density can be boosted to the blue and the orange curve. Uh, depending on a, a, an uncertain parameter gamma, which is the power uh, index. And uh, in this plot, I assume the central supermassive black hole's uh, uh, mass is 4 times 10 to 6, which, which is consistent with uh, our Milky Way's Sagittarius A. And uh, then the number density of uh, primordial black hole is modeled as the blue and uh, uh, orange curve. And uh, uh, finally, I uh, put here the final result of the omega GW from a single dark matter halo, uh, which is uh, our Milky Way. And uh, this is the stochastic background from the Milky Way's halo. And uh, you can see here, uh, first of all, I plot the least sensitivity. And then I choose the primordial black hole's mass to be one solar mass and the friction to be a very, very tiny number, 10 to minus 8. And you, you, you can see under uh, an uncertain choice of the gamma, either it equals to 2 or 1, then the uh, GW background signal uh, can approach the least sensitivity. And note here that the, this fraction is, 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 is only a very tiny number. If, uh, if all the dark matter is primordial black hole, which means that FPBH is equals to 100%, then this result is also 10 to 8 times larger, which is uh, an, a very amazing, amazing contribution. OK, uh, so after having the result from our Milky Way, then I move forward to uh, model the stochastic background from the contribution of all the universe, uh, including the extra galactic contribution. Because we know that in the large scale structure, we have uh, many, many galaxies, and each galaxy has a supermassive black hole with uh, dark matter uh, revolving around it. Uh, because the background is a superposition, then, then uh, the addition of other signals can contribute to the uh, background. So here, the, the, the core of this modeling is this term, uh, which is the massive black hole's number density. So we obtain this result by uh, starting with uh, the dark matter halo number density, which can be 
uh, known from either uh, theories and uh, the dark matter embodied simulations. And then we utilize a relation between the central mass of echo's mass and the viral mass of the dark matter halo. Then with this relation, we can uh, translate the dark matter halo density to the massive black hole's number density. And this is the result. Uh, so the, in this plot, I, uh, uh, I plot the uh, massive black hole's mass density versus the uh, mass of supermassive black holes and different color. Uh, means uh, the different uh, redshift, and you can see that in the early universe, for example, z equals to five, the red line, uh, the more massive black holes is uh, is more rare, and uh, uh, in the late universe, uh, the as the uh, massive black holes growing up, then there are more uh, massive black holes. Okay, and substitute the uh, massive black hole's number density into the expression of the omega G, uh, GW, we can calculate the contribution from all the uh, extragalactic uh, sources, uh, uh, which is a contribution from the whole universe. And the result uh, is plotted as the solid blue and uh, orange line. And for comparison, we also use the dashed line to plot the, the, the results from Sagittarius A, which is already plotted in the previous slides. Again, I choose the PBH to be one solar mass and the friction to be 10 to minus 8. And uh, you can see uh, if the uh, dark matter specs, uh, spec uh, index parameter gamma is 2, then this signal can already be detected by LISA. So uh, once this omega GW is obtained, uh, conversely, we can also uh, constrain the fraction of uh, the primordial black hole in dark matter uh, if we assume that in the future there will be a now res result. Uh, then if we do not detect anything, then we can uh, put an upper limit on the fraction of a primordial black hole in dark matter, and that is uh, uh, the solid the blue and orange line, which uh, uh, represent uh, two choices of gamma, and the dash line uh, is uh, the consideration for another uh, 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 system matrix. And um, uh, this is an upper limit, which means that the fraction of uh, PBH cannot exceed this uh, value, otherwise it would be detected by LISA. And you can see we can constrain a wide range of uh, uh, mass of PBH from 10 to minus 8 to 1 solar mass. And for 1 solar mass, the constraints could be very stringent. So for the orange line, it is 10 to minus 6. Um, if uh, this is true, then I think the one solar mass uh, primordial black hole can be almost be excluded. Uh, so to conclude, uh, so firstly, in this project, we uh, find a way to model the, the stochastic background energy density uh, spectrum uh, from the Emery's. Uh, which consists of uh, one supermassive black hole and another uh, subsolar primordial black holes. Uh, we uh, calculate either the, the, uh, the contribution from over Milky Way, the Sagittarius A supermassive black hole, and the extragalactic uh, contribution from the whole universe. And uh, uh, the conclusion is that they may be detected in some parameter uh, range. And uh, a second conclusion is that conversely, if we didn't, if we, we, we do not uh, uh, detect anything, then we can put a very string, stringent uh, upper limit on the fraction of primordial black hole. So anyway, LISA is a, a very powerful detector, and it can find a lot of interesting uh, signs, uh, including the exotic primordial black hole object. And uh, we are uh, looking forward to the future. And uh, that is all for my presentation, and uh, 
I would be happy to take any questions. And uh, uh, if you are interested in the more details of this uh, project, you can take a look of the paper, which is uh, in the link in this web page. Thank you very much.